16. Stephanie Angelica Vasquez Just a few days before she was scheduled to make a court appearance for a DUI charge in 2020, a young mother crashed her Toyota Supra in Gaithersburg, Maryland. 25-year-old Stephanie Angelica Vasquez had just recently posted multiple videos of herself on social media, including one with the ominous caption, I'm a killin' on the highway, when she suddenly collided with a Honda sedan at a high rate of speed, ironically ending her life. Vasquez and her passenger were killed by their injuries and pronounced dead at the scene. The Honda driver and his two passengers were immediately taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Both cars were left destroyed, with the Honda almost ripped in two and the Toyota crushed beyond recognition. Weeks before, Vasquez had been pulled over at 1.30 in the morning for reckless driving. She failed a field sobriety test and was arrested on suspicion of DUI and two gun charges. Her trial was set to start two days after the fatal wreck that took her life. Investigators think that Vasquez was speeding at the time of the crash, but didn't mention whether they believed alcohol was involved. 15. Justin Moan Denise Moan experienced a horror like no other when she entered her home in Levittown, Pennsylvania one night in January 2024 and discovered her husband's headless body. 68-year-old Michael Moan had been murdered, decapitated, and left lying in a pool of his own blood as it poured from where his head had been severed. While searching a bedroom in the house, detectives found Michael's head inside a cooking pot with a pair of rubber gloves as well as a blood-stained computer. In a nearby bathroom tub, they located a machete and a large kitchen knife. Investigators believe that the killer fatally shot Michael before deciding to decapitate his body. Earlier that day, Michael and Denise's 33-year-old son, Justin, filmed a 14-minute long video during which he held up his father's head. The footage was then posted to YouTube. Justin calmly stated that the head belonged to a federal employee of over 20 years and went on to describe his father as a traitor that will now be in hell for an eternity. Justin's commentary was followed by a rambling tangent about the U.S. government that heavily supported conspiracy theories associated with the QAnon movement. He urged civilian militias to unite together and murder federal officials on sight. According to the Post, Justin seemed to be reading from a pre-written manifesto on his computer during the clip, which looked like it was filmed at the home his father was killed. In addition to calling for violence against the American government, he claimed that he was the leader of a network of secret militias across the U.S and encouraged viewers to kill officials like FBI agents, judges, U.S. Marshals, and IRS employees. Justin also made several hateful statements targeting groups he felt betrayed the country, including the Biden administration, the Black Lives Matter movement, the LGBTQ community, and far-left woke mobs. By the time Denise got home, he'd already stolen his father's car and gone on the run. The accused killer was eventually arrested later that night after being found two hours away from where the murder took place. The charges placed on him include suspicion of first-degree murder, abuse of a corpse, and possessing an instrument of crime with intent. In February 2024, authorities imposed terrorism charges against Justin after discovering a USB drive holding apparent plans to blow up government buildings. If convicted, he could face life in prison without the possibility of parole. 14. Peyton Shires In October 2023, 24-year-old Peyton Shires was accused of engaging in an inappropriate relationship with a young man she counseled. Shires worked as a social worker in Columbus, Ohio. The teenager's mother alerted authorities to the suspected misconduct after finding multiple text messages with Shires in her son's cell phone. While searching through the device, detectives reportedly found videos of illicit interactions, which were recorded on several occasions over a month-long period. 
Shires allegedly confessed to her crimes and was arrested on multiple counts of felony unlawful conduct. She was ordered to not have any contact with the victim or his mother and was released on bond. The young woman was also terminated from her job. Several weeks later, Shires was accused of showing up at the victim's house with a gun. She apparently threatened to hurt his mother, who she blamed for ruining her life and taking everything from her. Thankfully, the boy's mother wasn't home at the time, but was alerted to Shire's presence by her doorbell camera, which prompted her to call the police. According to an arrest report, officers arrived and found Shire sitting on the family's front porch with the gun still in her hand. She now faces additional charges of intimidation of a crime victim and intimidation of a witness. On top of pressing criminal charges, the victim's mother has since filed a civil lawsuit against Shires and her former employer, seeking over $25,000 in damages. 13. Wayne Axtell In the age of smartphones and advancing technology, it's become incredibly easy for people to accidentally record themselves without fully realizing it. A 39-year-old British man named Wayne Axtell learned his lesson the hard way back in 2021 after getting arrested for riding a stolen Segway. While searching through Axtell's phone, detectives discovered recorded conversations of the suspect boasting about a series of thefts and burglaries he'd done across Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire. Several of the crimes involved the theft of expensive items such as a Segway. Axtell accidentally recorded himself by failing to change the phone's default settings. And he even discussed specific details about his crimes that, until then, he wasn't even a suspect in. After being caught red-handed, he pleaded guilty to conspiracy to steal, burglary, handling stolen goods, and possession of a blade. In addition to the crimes he owned up to, Axtell was suspected of being involved in at least 13 other robberies. He was sentenced to serve four years in prison for what he did. 12. Christopher Lambros Over a several-year-long period that first started in 2016, an intensive care nurse named Christopher P. Lambros assaulted over a dozen unconscious victims while he worked at a hospital located in Grand Junction, Colorado. Investigators uncovered his crimes in 2022 after receiving a report from another employee who had seen the suspect snapping inappropriate photos of a patient. The co-worker quickly called 911 and told police officers that she went to check on an ICU patient and discovered that the lights in their room were off and the privacy curtain had been drawn. She pulled back the curtain and was shocked to see Lambro snapping a selfie with his head up against the patient's exposed body. Lambros initially seemed embarrassed and denied any wrongdoing. He tried to claim that he was giving the patient an injection, but the police had enough probable cause to take his phone. While searching through the device, they found a treasure trove of photos and videos depicting the abuse of several victims, which Lambros referred to as his Dexter collection. Detectives were only able to identify five of the victims, including three who passed away in the intensive care unit after arriving at the hospital. The 62-year-old was immediately arrested and fired from his job in October 2022. In December 2023, he pleaded guilty to six counts of felony attempted assault, with five of the charges representing the victims who were identified, and the sixth charge representing the eight victims that police were unable to name. Ambrose apologized for his crimes, blaming his actions on a difficult childhood. But when it comes to this kind of behavior, sorry doesn't cut it. He was sentenced to spend three years and eight months in prison on each count that he pleaded guilty to, amounting to about 22 years with credit for time served, followed by two years of supervised release. 11. Lawrence Michael Handley Lawrence Michael Handley and his wife Shonda were recovering addicts who'd managed to achieve sobriety and wanted to go out in the community to help others. In 2007, the couple opened up a chain of rehab centers in Louisiana, which they eventually sold for a whopping $21 million. The Handleys enjoyed a lavish lifestyle from the proceeds of their year's worth of hard work. 
But the self-made millionaire's marriage spiraled downward back in 2017, when Shonda found out that Michael relapsed and was having an affair. When he refused to seek treatment, Shonda asked him to move out of their house in Lafayette and change the locks. Unwilling to accept that their marriage was over, Michael teetered back and forth between begging Shonda to take him back and angrily harassing her. He also spied on Shonda and sent intimate video clips of her to friends, relatives, and even unsuspecting neighbors. Shonda was granted a no-contact order of protection against Michael, but he violated it on several occasions by calling his estranged wife from untraceable phone numbers. One day, he even went to Shonda's house and slipped inside unnoticed before attacking her in a drunken fit of rage. A few days later, two suspects disguised as delivery men kidnapped Shonda at gunpoint, handcuffed her, and forced her into the back of a windowless van. They also threw a hood over her head and forced some pills down her throat, causing her to drift in and out of consciousness. The kidnappers then drove for the next hour until Iberville Parish Deputy Chad Martin tried to pull them over for acting suspicious. By then, they were about 60 miles or 97 kilometers away from Shonda's home. Instead of complying, the driver tried to outrun the deputy's squad car, but the van got stuck in some mud on a dirt road. The perpetrators then fled on foot and ended up drowning in a nearby canal. Suspecting that Michael Handley had masterminded the whole kidnapping, law enforcement placed Shonda in a safe house while the investigation played out. Michael somehow figured out where Shonda was staying during all of this, but was arrested at a motel in Sidel before he could physically go after her again. In his room, police discovered drugs, burner phones, $10,000 in cash, and a handwritten to-do itinerary containing items like hair dye, new location, train, and finish job. Based on the final point on the list, investigators believe that Michael had planned to kill Shonda before leaving the area in disguise. Detectives uncovered additional evidence in the next few days, including surveillance footage of Michael purchasing handcuffs at a police supply store days before the kidnapping, and records proving that he rented the van used in Shonda's abduction. One of the most damning pieces of evidence was uncovered by Shonda herself as she cleaned out a property she and Michael owned in Woodville, Mississippi. Michael had apparently not been aware that a security camera was rolling as he talked to a friend nonchalantly about how Shonda needed to die. Using the same camera, he had somehow accidentally recorded himself talking about his intention to kill Shonda in the motel room police arrested him. With the evidence stacked high against him, Michael ultimately decided to plead guilty to second-degree kidnapping. He was sentenced to serve 35 years in prison, which means he'll likely be well into his 80s when he sees freedom again. 10. Brenton Hager In 2017, a 25-year-old man in a stolen truck named Brenton Hager led law enforcement on a three-hour high-speed chase in and around Oklahoma City. He broadcasted the entire pursuit over Facebook Live, while a news helicopter filmed the dangerous ordeal from overhead. Five local schools went into lockdown as police officers tried to catch up with the fleeing suspect. In the news clips, the truck could be seen losing its trailer as it sped through a nearby field. Later on, Hager jumped out of the vehicle to remove a box from the bed of the truck. A good Samaritan tried blocking him and shot at the truck's tires as he was outside, but the suspect managed to get back in the car and continued the chase. He was later accused of causing at least three separate accidents throughout the pursuit, which finally came to an end after he crashed into a pond and led officers on a brief foot chase. More than two years later, in late 2019, Hager pleaded guilty to seven out of eight charges against him, including assault with a dangerous weapon, attempt to elude an officer, unauthorized use of a vehicle, obstructing an officer, driving under suspension, and malicious injury. 
He was sentenced to spend 20 years in prison and is required to serve at least 45% of his total sentence, which means he could see freedom again after less than 10 years. After his release, he'll be required to register as a violent offender for the rest of his life. When asked by news reporters why he pleaded guilty as he left the courtroom, Hager said, go big or go home. District Attorney Greg Mashburn had his own thoughts to share in response to Hager's comment. Telling local news station KOCO, he's not going home, so I mean, he can go big, but he's going to go to prison. 9. John Schrengost and Devin Jolkowski Shortly before 7 a.m. one morning in February 2017, a pair of young high school dropouts broke into President Grover Cleveland High School in Portland, Oregon, and started a fire. According to prosecutors, 20-year-old Devin Michael Jolkowski smashed in a window from outside, while 21-year-old John Patrick Schrengost filmed the break-in and encouraged his friends' illegal actions. The two had allegedly spent the night drinking heavily and abusing prescription drugs when they made their way into the school, where they stole food from the cafeteria and set several garbage cans ablaze. Jolkowski and Schrengost posted short clips of their crimes on Snapchat, which later helped investigators identify them as the prime suspects. A custodian eventually extinguished the fire, while a handful of staff members who'd arrived to work early that morning were evacuated from the building. The beginning of the school day was also delayed, but thankfully nobody was hurt in the process. Schrengost and Jolkowski were arrested after the school's principal found their self-recorded videos on social media and shared them with the authorities. During questioning, Jolkowski allegedly admitted to setting the fires himself and implicated Schrengost as his accomplice. They were each charged with multiple felonies, including one count of first-degree arson and three counts of second-degree burglary. Three months after the initial break-in, Jolkowski pleaded guilty to reduced counts of second-degree arson and second-degree burglary. He was sentenced to just 30 days in jail. Schrengost pleaded guilty to second-degree arson. Since he had no prior criminal record, he was given the option for his conviction to be removed if he avoided any further legal trouble for at least three years. During his sentencing hearing, the judge warned him that if he had any more run-ins with the law, the consequences would be much more severe the next time around. 8. Craig Sumner Elliott In September 2023, 68-year-old Craig Sumner Elliott was jogging with his dogs in Garden Grove, California, when he spotted a homeless man minding his own business sleeping on the sidewalk. Feeling inconvenienced by the simple fact that the man was blocking the sidewalk, Elliott decided to wake him up. Later identified as 40-year-old Antonio Garcia Avalos, the homeless man allegedly started to yell at Elliott to go away. Video captured by Elliot's cell phone depicted Avalos standing up and throwing a shoe at him. Just a few moments later, Elliot pulled out his handgun and shot at Avalos three times. Avalos was killed by his injuries later that day. Almost two months later, authorities charged Elliot with felony voluntary manslaughter with an enhancement for personal use of a firearm. If convicted of this crime, he could face up to 21 years in state prison. In a statement announcing the charges, Orange County District Attorney Todd Spitzer cited the incident as a stark reminder that it's a terrible idea for someone to take the law into their own hands, and that there are heavy consequences for doing so. He also described the situation as a tragic set of circumstances that unfolded in the worst way possible over a minor inconvenience of a blocked sidewalk, which cost an innocent man his life. 7. Cassandra Damper A Texas man's life was changed forever on Easter Sunday in April 2018, when he was shot in the head by a woman named Cassandra Damper. 26-year-old Devin Holmes was just sitting in a car outside a Houston gas station with Damper and another man, who were mindlessly playing with guns while broadcasting themselves on Facebook Live. About nine minutes into the video, Holmes was heard telling his friends that they were making him very nervous. 
just moments later, Cassandra's gun accidentally fired. Holmes survived, but now suffers from injuries that have left him unable to walk and do a majority of basic things on his own. He has since undergone extensive rehab, but may never make a full recovery. Cassandra insisted the shooting was accidental, but was still criminally charged in connection to the case. She pleaded guilty to aggravated assault with reckless, serious bodily injury and tampering with evidence, and was sentenced to serve 10 years in prison. Holmes and Damper were reportedly acquaintances, but didn't know each other all that well. As a requirement of her plea agreement, Damper apologized to the victim during her sentencing but it failed to comfort Holmes and his family, who now face a potential lifetime of hardships resulting from Cassandra's careless actions. Much to the disappointment of the victim and his loved ones, she was released on what's called a shock probation in 2020 after serving a measly six months. Under the terms of her release, she was required to undergo drug and alcohol testing, meet with a community supervisor, and perform 10,000 hours of community service. Damper was also subject to travel restrictions and ordered to either work or go to school full time. Cassandra's attorney, Monique Sparks, praised the judge's decision to release her client. She denied that Damper received a get out of jail free card and said that the judge was only using all the tools in his box to apply justice. Prosecutors disagreed with the move, saying that they'd fought hard against Cassandra's release, but that they respected the court's final decision. 6. Paul Riley and Michael Martin Thanks to modern technology, criminals are coming up with more and more creative ways to smuggle contraband into prisons. But the use of sophisticated smuggling techniques can sometimes backfire as a pair of Scottish gang members learned the hard way back in 2017. 32-year-old Paul Riley, 35-year-old Michael Martin, and an unidentified and an unidentified third suspect were unaware that their drone's camera was recording them as they packed thousands of dollars worth of drugs into chocolate Kinder Eggs with plans to fly them into Perth prison. The camera also caught the address of the house the men were working in front of, which was later identified as Martin's girlfriend's property, along with footage of one of the suspect's cars and clear views of the suspect's faces. Needless to say, the 18-minute video came in handy to the authorities after the drone failed to reach its destination and crashed into the prison yard with the drugs still attached to it, along with five cell phones. Inside the Kinder Eggs, authorities discovered cannabis, cannabis resin, and 128 pills, including Suboxone and a heavy narcotic known as Etizolam, which is typically used for treating anxiety and insomnia. Police quickly identified Riley and Martin as two of the three men in the footage and arrested them in connection to the case. Both men were known criminals, making them incredibly easy for law enforcement to recognize. Martin reportedly confessed that he was trying to deliver drugs to his brother Chris, who was being held at the maximum security prison at the time. He and Riley were also accused of flying a second drug-filled drone onto the prison grounds three days after the first drone crashed. The second delivery was successfully retrieved by his brother, who managed to pull the goods into his third floor cell using a makeshift fishing pole with a hook. Shortly after the contraband arrived, prison employees reached the cell and discovered the pole, along with two cell phones that were hidden inside a small container of protein powder. Martin was cleared of multiple charges, but was found guilty of being involved in the supply of drugs. During his trial, he claimed that the two other suspects were complete strangers who'd shown up at his residence, claiming to be friends of his brother and asking for help with the contraband he was sentenced to a year in prison. Riley pleaded guilty to being involved in the supply of drugs. In court, his defense attorney claimed that Riley had no previous interactions with the other two suspects and no knowledge of where the drugs were actually going. 
The defendant claimed that he agreed to help package the drugs and blamed his years-long struggle with addiction for his crimes. But as one law enforcement official pointed out, Riley knew that the delivery of the drugs involved a drone, which should have tipped him off that it wasn't a run-of-the-mill job. He was sentenced to serve 33 months in prison for his role in the smuggling scheme. 5. Sean Vasquez The chaos that morning commuters and members of law enforcement experienced in Covina, California back in April 2017 could be described as nothing short of terrifying. Los Angeles County deputies were called shortly before 10 a.m., with reports about a suspect shooting at passing vehicles. After arriving at the scene, they were immediately met with gunfire. The suspect, who was later identified as 20-year-old Sean Vasquez, was live-streaming his crimes on Facebook as he fired a gun at the deputies and their vehicles. Unable to see where the bullets were coming from, they ducked behind their cars and luckily managed to avoid being shot. Witnesses later told ABC7 that it seemed as if Vasquez was challenging the police to shoot back as he fired at them. He barricaded himself inside a house nearby and refused to come out, prompting law enforcement to evacuate several nearby homes. Prompting law enforcement to evacuate several nearby homes as a SWAT team moved in. Vasquez finally surrendered after an hours-long standoff and was charged with seven counts of assault on an officer with a deadly weapon. He pleaded guilty in early 2019 and was sentenced to over 30 years in state prison. State records now show that he'll become eligible for parole in 2031. 4. Jack McBride in April 2020, a Scottish teenager named Jack McBride uploaded footage of a deadly confrontation he had with his neighbor in Johnstone, Renfrewshire, to Snapchat. In the video, he was seen standing outside the home of 26-year-old Johnny Winters and challenging his opponent to a fight. McBride also bragged in the clip about how he was about to get into a street brawl and shared a screenshot of the messages he'd exchanged with Winters before going to his house. As he yelled at Winters to come face him in a nearby alleyway, Winters was heard telling McBride to come to him instead. The two young men were entangled in an ongoing dispute that stemmed from McBride's belief that Winters had set the front door of his house on fire. The clip ended with the camera in selfie mode and the caption, hashtag game time. Just a few moments later, Winters hit McBride with the blunt side of an ax. McBride responded by fatally stabbing Winters in the heart with a kitchen knife, bringing the long-standing feud between the two young men to a senseless and tragic end. He then fled the scene on foot and was later arrested for his murder. In 2022, McBride pleaded guilty to a reduced count of culpable homicide under provocation and was sentenced to spend six years and eight months in prison. 3. Richard Pinheiro In a disturbing abuse of power that was caught on camera in 2017, a Baltimore police officer named Richard Pinheiro Jr. unknowingly recorded body cam footage of himself planting drugs at a crime scene while still on duty. In the clip, he could be seen placing a bag of illegal pills in a soup can under some garbage in an alleyway. He then went back out to the street, turned on his body cam, then returned to the scene with two other officers and pretended to rediscover the drugs. Pinheiro acted shocked when he found the pills, and a suspect was arrested in connection to the planted stash. He was unaware that his body cam was actually programmed to save 30 seconds of footage before being manually activated, and that the camera was recording the whole time as he planted the drugs. Just days before the defendant in the case was scheduled to go to trial, his public defender found the video and brought it to the court's attention. The charges against the defendant were instantly dropped, and Pinheiro was charged with mishandling evidence. Pinheiro argued that he'd legitimately found the drugs in the alleyway, 
but that he forgot to activate his body cam beforehand and failed to record the discovery. He claimed he was only trying to reenact what really happened with his body cam rolling for the sake of having it on video as evidence for the case. The prosecution denied that Pinheiro's actions were just an honest mistake and admonished him for hurting his own credibility. After the video was released to the public, the district attorney dropped all criminal cases that relied on Pinheiro's evidence. Sergeant Josh Rosenblatt, who was the head of legal instruction at the police academy, said that recruits were not told to recreate the discovery of evidence during their training. In other words, even if Pinheiro was being truthful about his actions, he was still violating policy. Pinheiro opted for a bench trial, which meant that a judge would ultimately decide the verdict instead of a jury. He was found guilty and was handed a three-year suspended prison sentence along with probation. Despite the guilty verdict, Pinheiro remained on the police force in a desk job position for at least two and a half years while an internal investigation was conducted. As of early 2020, he was still employed and collecting paychecks. 2. Carolyn Rodriguez as a criminal justice reform activist, Carolyn Rodriguez runs a YouTube channel called Carolina in Fort Worth. The channel is dedicated to educating people about their rights as civilians. As part of her work, she often posts videos of herself deliberately challenging public officials on matters relating to a civilian's constitutional rights, referring to these tests as First Amendment audits. In 2019, the 55-year-old filmed herself going inside a government construction office in Tarrant County, Texas, and sat down at a computer that she was apparently not authorized to use. As she walked toward the entrance, she pointed out what she thought were undercover police cars and mentioned the absence of any signs telling civilians not to go inside the office. She was heard shouting hello repeatedly and receiving no response as she looked around for any small sign of another human being in the building. Rodriguez pulled up her YouTube channel on the computer and held up a handwritten sign saying, Carolina in Fort Worth was here. She was clearly entertained by her behavior as she got up and left the building. An employee later found Rodriguez's note and saw her YouTube channel left open on his computer when he returned to the office. It didn't take long for him to find the video of the vigilante YouTuber using his computer. Rodriguez was then charged with breach of computer security, a felony which is defined under Texas law as when someone knowingly accesses a computer, computer network, or computer system belonging to someone else without the owner's clear consent. Employees noticed a black Dodge Charger in Carolyn's videos, which resembled a car parked down the street. They managed to jot down the car's license plate before it sped away, and law enforcement traced the car to Carolyn's husband. The building Rodriguez entered was overseen by Tarrant County Director of Facilities Management, David Phillips. He said that his staff left the building to go to a job site and had accidentally left the doors unlocked. Phillips insisted that it wasn't a regular habit and warned that his employees would be double checking to make sure the doors were locked whenever they left the building from now on. He also said that if Rodriguez wanted a tour, all she had to do was ask. Rodriguez pleaded guilty to the charge a few months later. She was sentenced to just one day in jail and fined $2,000. Her YouTube channel remains active to this day, with a following that's gone from 7,000 to nearly 81,000 followers since her arrest. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. 1. Michael Nicholas in Great Britain, civilians are forbidden from recording video footage inside court buildings. But that didn't stop Michael Nicholas from filming himself in 2022 as he harassed a witness at the South Tyneside Magistrates Court. The 24-year-old's cell phone was rolling as he approached a designated witness care room and spoke to the victim through a window, accusing the man of being a snitch and a few other things that are better left unsaid. Nicholas quickly caught the attention of security guards as he yelled at the victim and waved his arms around angrily. He 
was kicked out of the building, but once again approached the witness care room's window from outside and continued shouting at the witness. The rude young man sang a different tune when police arrived and arrested him. He claimed that he didn't realize how serious his behavior was, but it was serious enough for the hearing involving the victim to be postponed and for Nicholas to be charged with witness intimidation. With the video footage on his phone being used in court to prove his crime, Nicholas realized that the deck was stacked against him. He decided to plead guilty to the charge and was sentenced to serve seven months in prison. The judge overseeing the case issued a five-year restraining order that banned Nicholas from any contact with the victim and emphasized the seriousness of the crime, ensuring that the defendant harbored no confusion about the severity of his actions. He went on to explain that Nicholas committed an attack on the justice system by harassing the witness and told Nicholas that his decision to record video inside a court building was also an aggravating factor in the case. Defense attorney Robin Turton described her client's behavior as a sign of immaturity and a simple spur-of-the-moment thoughtless act. Nicholas himself acknowledged that he'd acted stupid as he accepted his fate and left the courtroom to serve his time in peace. 10. The Disappearance of Hannah Graham 18-year-old University of Virginia student Hannah Graham was last seen alive at a restaurant in Charlottesville during the early morning hours of September 13, 2014. Witnesses reported that she was with 32-year-old Jesse Leroy L.J. Matthew Jr., and that the two were seen cozying up to each other. They also said that Hannah appeared to be drunk. One bystander, who saw the couple near a car matching the description of Matthew's vehicle, said that the man she was with looked unfriendly. They claimed to overhear Hannah saying, I'm not getting in that car with you. Five weeks after her disappearance, Hannah's remains were found on an abandoned property about 12 miles or 19 kilometers from where she went missing. Her death was ruled a homicide by undetermined means. Home surveillance footage from numerous cameras helped police trace Hannah's last known whereabouts. And in one clip, she can be seen stumbling, adding to suspicions that she was intoxicated at the time. The footage also proves that she was with Matthew since he was identified in the video. While investigating Matthew, police connected him to the 2009 disappearance and murder of college student Morgan Harrington, as well as an assault that happened back in 2005. He was ultimately convicted of both murders and the assault, as well as various other charges surrounding the crimes. The surveillance footage from Hannah Graham's last night alive proved instrumental in winning her murder case. At the moment, Matthew is serving four life sentences behind bars for his horrific actions. 9. Francisco Leon Casavant One night in 2021, a man was captured on surveillance footage staring into the window of a residence in Hollywood, Florida. He could be seen moving a paving stone into place and standing on it to get a better look inside. The homeowner, Janelle Drayton, was eating dinner with her child at the time. She was unaware of the Peeping Tom's presence until she noticed the paving stone missing from its usual spot. She then watched her home camera footage to figure out where it went. By then, the man was long gone, but to the woman's horror, the video showed that he'd stood outside her home, looking inside for almost two hours. Police recognized the creep in the video as 24-year-old Francisco Leon Casavant, who was already facing a criminal charge for allegedly assaulting a woman in a previous incident from 2020. In that case, he was accused of forcing his way into a woman's home, taking her to the ground and choking her. But luckily, she fought back and managed to escape before he could fully follow through with his plans. At the time, Casavant was out on bond and awaiting trial for allegations of touching himself inappropriately in front of another woman. His past goes back even further than that, according to Broward County Assistant State Attorney Taylor Hoffman, who told the South Florida Sun Sentinel 
that Casavant had faced at least five previous incident exposure charges. At the time of his arrest in early 2021, he'd recently pled out of all three of his cases. Even more shockingly, Casavant was on an electric monitoring device when he committed his most recent offense. He reportedly cut the monitor off before going out that night and spying on the unsuspecting resident and her family. Authorities charged him with committing an unnatural and lascivious act, resisting arrest, and violating probation. He was taken to the local jail as a result, and he was held without bond. Unfortunately, there hasn't been any recent updates on the case, and Kosovan's sentencing is unclear. 8. The Queen's Fire Bomber In early 2012, a man filled empty Starbucks Frappuccino bottles with gasoline and fashioned Molotov cocktails out of them. He then threw them at various homes and businesses throughout Queens, New York. He targeted at least two homes, an Islamic center and a deli. One residence was damaged so badly it was rendered uninhabitable. Police began tracking the suspect after a gas station captured footage of him filling the Frappuccino bottles with gas while pretending to fill his vehicle's gas tank. He was driving a stolen car, and investigators managed to track down the vehicle to another location, where they waited for him to arrive. 40-year-old Ray Lazier Langand, an unemployed truck driver, was taken into custody on five counts of possession of an explosive, four counts of arson, and one count of a hate crime for making anti-Muslim statements at one of the crime scenes. He allegedly confessed to the firebombings during questioning, telling detectives that he targeted most of the victims because he had a grudge against them. Lengen said he firebombed the Islamic Center because they refused to let him use the bathroom. In another incident, which was captured on surveillance video, he mistakenly targeted a home that houses a small Hindu temple during an attempt to victimize a drug dealer. Langand already had an extensive rap sheet by then, which included past charges for weapons, crack possession, and check kiting. In addition to the firebombings, he was accused of stealing the car he was driving from JFK Airport. He faced both state and federal charges, and received sentences of 20 and 18 years, which he's now serving concurrently. 7. Roderick Green in December 2022, police responded to a call about a stabbing in Georgetown, South Carolina. They found the victim at the scene with stab wounds to his thigh, head, and face. He had a jacket tied around his leg to slow the bleeding, but he was in rough shape. The injured man told the responding officers that he was riding in a car with the suspect, 44-year-old Roderick Green, when the man suddenly held him at gunpoint and said that he planned to rob him and his father. The victim escaped from the vehicle and ran toward a house in hopes of getting someone to call for help. However, Green followed and attacked him before fleeing the scene. But miraculously, the victim managed to knock on a resident's door. Surveillance footage from a nearby home corroborated the man's version of events and helped confirm the suspect's identity. Police were unable to locate Green that day, but they caught up with him two days after the stabbing when an employee at a local AT&T store hit the panic button while he was inside. Green allegedly entered the store and knocked merchandise off shelves while spitting on the items. He then screamed obscenities and threatened to kill everyone that was there. This violent outburst was also captured on camera. In the end, Green was charged with shoplifting, possession of marijuana, assault and battery, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest. This case is so recent that Green hasn't received sentencing for his crimes yet. 6. Daniel Bryan Knave Multiple residents along a particular street in Tempe, Arizona were horrified in late 2022 when they reviewed their home surveillance footage and discovered a peeping Tom peering in through their windows at night. The first known incident happened during the early hours one morning toward the end of summer, when a homeowner's ring camera captured video of the man looking inside. At one point, he could be seen leaving the residence, but he returns again later. During his second visit, the creep went into the backyard and peered in through multiple windows. A few days later, the same man was seen looking into someone's home, 
while they were using the bathroom. They called the police, who arrived in time to catch the suspect, 22-year-old Daniel Bryan Knave. Officers took him into custody on previous warrants, but he was soon released. Just a week later, Knave was caught at a third residence in the same neighborhood, where he allegedly watched someone taking a shower through their bathroom window. He was accused of returning to the home twice over the following days and peering in through the bedroom and kitchen windows. During his fourth visit, a home security camera captured the suspect lurking in the backyard. After noticing the camera, he left and didn't return. The alleged serial spy was charged with seven counts of trespassing and two counts of surreptitious viewing. He was then taken to the Tempe City Jail, where he's currently waiting for his next court date. 5. A Hailstorm of Bullets During the early morning hours of April 9, 2021, two armed men approached a house in Miramar, Florida, and fired dozens of bullets straight at the windows and doors. The two adults and six children inside the home dove for cover amid the onslaught of bullets, which struck one teenager in the arm. It wasn't long before he was laying on the kitchen floor in a pool of his own blood. Luckily, the young man survived the incident. The shooting was captured on home surveillance footage. The homeowner, Ebony Moore, told the South Florida Sun Sentinel that her son and his friend had just arrived and were the only people in the house who were awake when the incident took place. Her son's friend was the shooting victim. Moore said that she was grateful that none of her five kids who were all home at the time and ranged in age between 8 and 18 years old, were unharmed. She was especially relieved that none of the 40 bullets struck her daughter, who was sleeping in the living room right in the path of the shooters. Ebony and her husband said that they recognized the shooters as the same men who robbed their son at gunpoint a month earlier. They told the police the suspects' names, but unfortunately, the teen who was shot didn't want to press charges and was uncooperative with the investigation. It made the case difficult to pursue, and no arrests were made. The incident left the Moore children traumatized, to the point where the family could no longer celebrate the 4th of July. Now, the sound of fireworks only reminds them of the shooting. Ebony's husband, Hensel, said he wanted to pack up his family and leave Florida amid the ongoing violence that was plaguing the area at the time. Hopefully, the family has found a sense of safety since then. 4. Anthony Murgatroyd In an effort to find out why his girlfriend's dog was destroying her furniture, Anthony Murgatroyd set up a motion-activated dog cam at the woman's home in Leeds, England. But the camera served a much different purpose in late 2022, when the couple got into an argument about Murgatroyd seeing prostitutes. During the disagreement, the couple unknowingly activated the camera, and it captured footage of Murgatroyd hitting his partner and dragging her out of the house. The video also showed him chasing and threatening the victim with a zombie knife while making slashing motions near her head. Both the victim and the couple's dog clearly seem distressed in the footage of the disturbing assault. At some point, the woman escaped and ran to a neighbor who called for help. Meanwhile, police apprehended Murgatroyd during a violent struggle at his residence. The victim was too terrified to testify in court, but the camera footage was enough to secure a conviction. Murgatroyd pleaded guilty to assault and a weapons charge, and as a result, he was sentenced to 20 months behind bars. 3. Triple Slaying 36-year-old Paul Billion was found dead from a gunshot wound in the kitchen of his Sioux Falls, South Dakota home during the summer of 2022. By the time his remains were discovered, he'd been dead for several days. In a briefing, Police Lieutenant Nick Butler said that it appeared to be a drug-related robbery that escalated into violence. The investigation carried on for four months while detectives worked to identify the suspects and their social media activity. Various home cameras captured three suspects coming and going from Billion's residence, and other evidence convicted a fourth suspect to the murder weapon. Gabo Westford Uo, Thomas Tarley, and Sotimon Poli 
were charged with first-degree murder and burglary. Carnell Jimerson also faces a weapons charge in connection with the gun that was used to kill the victim. The murder suspects are being held on bails of over $1 million each, while their case makes its way through the legal system. 2. Mickey Vin Brown Just days into the 2023 new year, Broward County Sheriff's deputies responded to a call about shots fired at a home in North Lauderdale, Florida. They arrived to find a man unresponsive in the driveway, suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. Unfortunately, he was pronounced dead at the scene. The victim's name is being withheld under Florida's Marcy's Law, which went into effect in 2018. The law allows crime victims to shield their identities and personal information from the public. Homicide detectives identified the suspect with help from witnesses, evidence, and surveillance footage. The alleged shooter, 20-year-old Mickey Vin Brown, was pulled over and apprehended in the nearby city of Tamarack. He was charged with second-degree murder with a firearm, committing a first-degree felony with a weapon, and probation violation. Brown is currently being held in the local jail pending the next step in his case. 1. Kyle Halls Just days before Thanksgiving in 2022, a house in Philadelphia was firebombed in the middle of the night. The homeowner was upstairs when they heard glass shattering on the ground floor and rushed downstairs to find the curtains engulfed in flames. Luckily, all four residents escaped unharmed and firefighters managed to get the blaze under control before it could spread throughout the house. In the aftermath of the unexpected fire, the homeowner obtained surveillance footage of the alleged perpetrator throwing a flaming object at the window. Other surveillance video from the days leading up to the fire showed the same man discarding a cardboard box along the street. Some mail that was found inside the box had the name Kyle Halls on it, and he was the same man that was identified by prosecutors in the footage. In addition to allegedly torching the townhouse, Halls was accused of breaking the window of another building nearby. The Temple University Police Department arrested him and turned the case over to the Philadelphia police. At the moment, the case is ongoing. Thanks for watching. Do you know anyone who was arrested for something they were caught doing on video? Tell us about it in the comments below.